School aged children at a Queensland youth detention centre have been spending most of their waking hours locked in their cells because there's not enough staff to let them out. Meet Ricky. When talking about his weeks spent in solitary confinement, he describes a restlessness that morphs into rage. You know, it made me into like a very violent person. Like you feel like that now, now that I'm hurt. I don't I don't care if I hurt anyone, you know, or yeah, but you just go crazy. Ricky's been written off. He's 14. Queensland is embroiled in debate about youth crime and what to do with young offenders. I've spoken to children, advocates and whistleblowers who have worked in the system. They say that places like the Cleveland Youth Detention Centre are turbocharging re-offending rates and making the situation worse for these kids and their community. 48% of the youth crime in Queensland is committed by just 10% of criminals. They have no concept of the consequences of their actions and no fear of the law. Ricky's one of the kids the government talks about. With 400 other kids, he sits on a blacklist that's disproportionately Indigenous and actively targeted by police. Kids are effectively told that they belong in prison. You could be making plans in there, you know, for, for when you get out, that you're going to do good. And when you get out, you get peer pressured from your boys and you, know, you go on a mission and you know, to do what you do best. When he was 12, he was granted bail to attend a state government-backed rehabilitation program run by elders in the First Nations community. I've seen emails that talk about demands from police that he'd be brought back immediately or they would drive up to the camp and arrest him. You know, you, you get out and you expect to do good, but the only thing you're good at is breaking in and stealing cars and, you know, and that's what you know best. You know, like Cleveland messes with your head. This year, several high-profile cases have cast a spotlight on youth crime. Flowers laid in tribute to Cherie Robertson, a nurse who was returning from her shift but never made it home. Queensland's youth justice system is again in question tonight after the horrific home invasion murder of Emma Lovell, allegedly committed by two 17-year-olds. Community calls for change have resulted in increasingly tougher policy initiatives. Both sides of politics voted for these stronger laws. They are the strongest laws that have been put in place across Australia. And as a result, there are a record number of kids in Queensland detention centres. More kids are being dragged into the system and now it's bursting at the seams. The latest data I've seen from March 15 this year, there are 275 Queensland kids in a detention centre. 88% of those kids are being held on remand meaning they had yet to be sentenced. On that day, there were another 62 kids that were held in adult police watch houses. It's a measure taken by the government to deal with overcrowding in detention centres. Cleveland itself was likened to Guantanamo Bay by the chief executive of a Cairns-based youth organisation, Genevieve Sinclair. She says she's raised issues related to cleanliness, the use of solitary confinement, and a lack of schooling with ministers and senior bureaucrats. Several sources allege conditions are filthy, that food scraps and other rubbish is sometimes left to pile up outside cell doors for days. Union agreements demand that when units are understaffed, children are kept in what's called continuous cell occupation or blackout mode, which means they don't attend classes, activities or rehabilitation programs. A former worker told me that there had been periods of about 14 weeks where staff numbers were so low that they couldn't even escort kids around the detention centre. He said the longer kids are in cells, the worse their behaviour gets. To me, when I go in there, there's nothing there to, like, help us. And, you know, and, and that's truth, bro. Like, nothing there to help us, bro. The state government has plans to build two new therapeutic youth detention centres. Uh, one near Brisbane and another in North Queensland. You don't want them in watch houses. Well, how about they go into uh, detention facilities where they can actually uh, get the support that they need? However, sources raised concerns about how these would be staffed, noting 
we can't actually staff the centres we have now. In the meantime, the government has sent more staff to Townsville, um, including bringing staff from Brisbane to work in North Queensland. Teachers at the school say those measures have made some difference, but that many children still aren't able to attend with any regularity. When I spoke to Ricky, he'd been out for two days, sent back to an environment where he you know, could point out a drug dealer from his lounge room window. By the end of the week, he was back in custody, where he remains. I think about the, con- like the consequences of my actions, but, but I know I am going back there, so... So I'll just get the most freedom I can.